Well, I'm an Under Secretary General with the United Nations myself, so ultimately I'm answerable to the Security Council for part of my working uh, week. So I'm delighted to see Australia elected to the Security Council, and uh, it was a good win. 140 votes was uh, more than I think the government would have expected. Um, they clearly did think that, that, that Australia would win against Finland and Luxembourg. It wasn't the hardest of competition, but nevertheless, um, it was a good win, and, I, and I'm pleased Australia won it. Tony Abbott has said that $25 million or thereabouts is an expensive... Uh, it's, it's been an expensive process. Do you think that that reflects an expensive uh, bid or over five years? Is that a reasonable amount to spend? Well, I think it was four years. Um, and secondly, of course, that's not the full bill at all. The, uh, you have to take into consideration that a couple of embassies were opened in Africa that might not have otherwise been opened. And um, quite a lot of aid was uh, also spent in countries that we typically wouldn't spend aid in. So. Um, it's pretty hard to work out exactly what it costs, but my point about the cost is the uh, decision is now made. Um, we've been elected to the Security Council, um, of course only for two years. We're a non-permanent member. We don't have a veto. We just, um, un unlike the five permanent members, um, but nevertheless um, we can uh, make our voice heard on the Security Council and let's hope that Australia can, um, um, can make a valuable contribution. Rupert Murdoch has uh, sent a message on Twitter. He says, big deal, Australia gets temporary non-veto seat on Security Council. Cost big fortune in foreign aid all over the place. No Aussies care. Rupert Murdoch, what, what do you, how do you respond to that sort of view? Well, I think, by the way, that's a very popular view. I think a lot of people would uh, ask themselves, well, what's in this for me? And uh, in, in Australians, you know, would ask themselves that question. And of course, in a sense, the answer is there's nothing much in it for them. It's a, a position of some diplomatic prestige to be a member of the Security Council. You are sitting around that, uh, that table in the Security Council participating in debates about um, significant global issues. But there are a couple of things to say about it. One, you're only going to do it for two years. We're only a non-permanent member. And secondly, the end of the day in the Security Council, the five permanent members, all of whom have a veto, uh, really call the shots. Not just because they have the veto, but they write most of the resolutions and uh, they drive the process. But that's not to say the other ten non-permanent members don't have a role to play. I mean, after all, if, if the P5, the five permanent members, wanted to do something through the Security Council and the other ten decided they didn't want that to happen, they could stop it. Um, so, you know, they have some, Australia will have some power. Um, and, and there's another issue, and that is, well, how important is the Security Council in any case? It can be important. It was important in relation to Libya. Um, it was important in relation to the war in Afghanistan, the sanctions against Iraq. On other occasions, like uh, Syria at the moment, it's been deadlocked. And for as long as it's deadlocked, that diminishes uh, diminishes its importance. But uh, look, I think it's good for Australia to be there. I'm glad we're there. Uh, OK, it costs some money to get there. The money's been spent. It was a successful campaign. DFAT did a fantastic job through this campaign. Um, and let's hope Australia does a good job on the Security Council. And I know with your relationship with Kevin Rudd over the years, you haven't agreed on on everything and, in fact, not a lot over the years. But do you think that he deserves praise for having the vision to make this bid? Well, I think, a, 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 I wouldn't call it a particularly visionary decision. I think at some stage Australia needed to bid to go on the Security Council. Back in, I I'm, I'm, might be wrong, it was around 2002, I took a submission to the Cabinet uh, um, recommending that we make a bid for the Security Council a few years later. It might have been in 2006 or so. Um, and John Howard wasn't very enthusiastic about it. He thought, well, you know, it's a lot of money to spend, uh, it's risky, we could lose, um, and um, let's not uh, distort our foreign policy for the purposes of getting on the Security Council for just two years as a non-permanent member. But on the other hand, um, uh, I wasn't against Kevin Rudd's decision to make the bid when he did in 2008. I thought that was reasonable. He chose a good year because um, there was just Luxembourg and, and Finland in the field at that time. 
And so Australia ought to be able to beat those countries. That's different if there's a Turkey or a Germany or a, someone like that. But with those two countries, we should be able to beat them. Um, and um, I mean, the fact that the European Union is not as popular as it was but because of the crisis with the Euro meant that security, uh, General Assembly members were not likely to vote for um, two European Union members of the Security Council, they, uh, which Finland and Luxembourg both are. So, you know, it was a propitious time for us to run, a good time for us to run. Um, and uh, so in that respect, I do agree with Kevin Rudd. And finally, on to South Australian state politics. The opposition leader, Isabel Redman, faces a, a leadership challenge on Tuesday from her health spokesman, Martin Hamilton-Smith. Uh, can I get your response to that? And also... Uh, a categorical uh, response in terms of your own future because uh, there have been suggestions that Isabel Redmond had offered to hand over to you. Do you have any aspiration or, um, or, or uh, interest in returning to politics and at the state level? Well, I explained at the beginning of this interview that I'm an Under Secretary General with the United Nations running the peace process in Cyprus, so um, that's an extremely difficult job. Um, Certainly gives, it, it would certainly give me good training, I suppose, for dealing with some of these other issues that I see before my eyes. But no, I'm happy doing what I'm doing. Um, uh, as, for the, as for the leadership um, challenge, look, the, the thing about the South Australian Liberals is they need to concentrate um, on working hard to not just expose the weaknesses of the government, but to develop a policy program. People in South Australia are tired of the present government it's, it's tired, it's run out of ideas, it has no dynamism or energy about it. South Australia does need a new government, the Liberals can provide that government, um, but it's not just about changing the leader the whole time, it is about developing a program and developing policies and that's what they've got to concentrate on. It sounds like you've still got a fair bit of interest in it and you certainly didn't rule out the prospect. Well, I mean, they're having a leadership ballot and I'm not going to be in it. So I think that speaks for itself. I don't need to really articulate it more clearly than that. And uh, that will go one way or the other. I've, I've not done the numbers. I haven't got a clue what the situation is there. I'm not even a member of parliament, of any parliament. I'm, I'm happy doing what I'm doing. I enjoy working for the UN. I'm proud of what we've achieved in Cyprus over the last four years um, through the UN with our team there and in, uh, in New York. Um, and next week, when the leadership ballot takes place in uh, South Australia, I'll be in New York um, with the United Nations, uh, focusing on my job there. Mr Downer, as always, appreciate your time. Thank you. It's a great pleasure.